ice to meet you. This is Frostbite, a game where a man named Tate opens the deep freezer of his compassion and I reach in, grab his heart, and set it in a sink full of warm water to thaw. And you know what? He ends up killing me anyways, so... Spoilers. <laughs> I've already played this demo, but I learned that there was an extended version um, with updated art and more dialogue and choices. So I figured I would subject myself to this gas station cutie once more. Because it ended so well for me the first time. Okay, so yeah, th this is definitely a lot different. When you guys suggest games for me, I typically go and I find them in that moment and I'll download it and save it onto my computer so that when I'm done with whatever game I'm playing in that moment, I could just have a folder of other games y'all suggested and just grab one, go right into it. So I think I downloaded Frostbite right before they released the, the updated demo and I did not realize that it had updated. <laughs> but just looking at the, the art that was on the website already and looking at this, like I can already tell that they've revamped so much of it. It looks really good. <laughs> Sliding into the soft driver's seat, you listen to the gentle rumble of your car as you let the engine warm up, revving it every so often in an attempt to rush the process. As you sat idly, you notice something in the passenger seat. From the looks of it, it was your driver's ID. It must have fallen out of your pocket the last time you drove. You quickly leaned over to snatch it up, your eyes scanning over your name before you tucked it away again. I like how our fuel gauge is like on E. <laughs> it's very true to life. <laughs> I really need to watch where I keep this thing. I'd lose my head if it wasn't attached. The heater slowly began to blow hot air, signaling a warm enough engine. Gently pressing your foot to the pedal, you carefully pulled out onto the road. Your fingers danced over the car's radio buttons, flipping quickly through channels. It seemed country music was pretty popular around these parts. Sighing, you let your hand drop back down to fidget with the side of the steering wheel as you tried to focus on the slowly disappearing road ahead of you, street signs quickly being obscured by the gradually increasing snowfall. Ugh, the snow is getting ridiculous. We're going to end up stranded at this rate, and I don't know if Jack stocked up beforehand. He seemed a little flighty. You thought for a bit longer about what to do. You hadn't known your soon-to-be roommate long, so you had no idea how reliable he would be in this situation. When you picked up the roommate wanted ad, you weren't prepared for his place to be in the middle of absolute nowhere. Still, you were happy he wasn't asking for a ton of rent and getting away from the city would be a nice break. You sighed as you decided you would have to make a stop at the store for supplies. It was the only logical solution at this point. Carefully unclipping the glove box, you yanked an old road map out and awkwardly unfolded it on the seat next to you, glancing back and forth from the map to the road. It's 1995 in this game, just so you know. Because, of course, you'd be like, well, why don't you just pull out your phone? Old. <laughs> you didn't realize how fast you were going while you were distracted, and... You quickly grabbed onto the steering wheel, slowly pumping the brakes as gently as possible as you rolled to a stop on the side of the road. The ice had gotten so bad already, you began to worry if you would even make it home. Glancing back over the map now that you were safely at a stop, you scanned it for any signs of a store on the way. Your eyes lit up the moment you saw the generic grocery store just up the road on the map. That's where you are heading, you thought, as you steeled yourself and slowly pulled away from the shoulder of the road and back onto the street. Market smile. Just as you pass through a tunnel of thick trees, you spot a beacon in the distance lighting up the otherwise inky forest. You can't believe your luck that a store would be open this late at night, especially in the middle of nowhere like this. Carefully turning into the parking lot from the slick road, you pull into a parking space closest to the door. It looks like there's only two cars parked here aside from you. You take note of the dirty blue pickup truck parked right in front. It looks old and well-loved, the paint chipping in many places, and the passenger window has a crack that you're surprised is holding up. 
Your eyes moved down to the rear end and noticed the dark brown stains leaking down from beneath the tailgate. You chalk it up to it belonging to a seasoned hunter. Scanning the rest of the parking lot, you notice the only other car is parked off to the side of the building at the end of the lot. Some cheap green sedan with duct tape patching up some very obvious dents, as if it's helping. You rub your arms as the cold chills finally get to you and you take it as your sign to stop lingering and get inside. The automatic doors slide open with strained obedience and you notice the hours sign on the door has been haphazardly scribbled out with Sharpie. Guess they make their own hours here. Works for you. It doesn't work for me, actually. I need to know when I'm allowed to come in. As you walk into the store, you notice it's not much warmer than outside. Disappointing, but at least there's no wind. You tighten your coat a bit more around your shoulders and take a look around. It's a pretty normal store, exactly what you'd expect for a place that's so out of the way. The aisles looked well stocked enough for you to get everything you need for the next few days, and it looks like they even have a toiletry section. The last thing you notice is the bored looking cashier who looks like he'd rather be anywhere else and you can't blame him. He's just as bundled up even though he looks more used to this weather than you. He shifts absentmindedly and you catch a glimpse of his name tag, enough to read and you notice his name is Vic. You consider what it's short for for a moment before he glances up at you with an annoyed look in his eyes before looking back down at his magazine. Hey slack jawed tourist, if you're gonna just stand there all night I can give you my job. Just as charming as he was the last time. Awesome. His curt rudeness catches you off guard and you hesitate to respond. He doesn't really seem like the type to care if you talk back anyway as you watch him slowly flip through the pages of his magazine. You could talk to him a little more though, it might be faster to know where things are at the store. Nah, fuck off, Vic. Although, were we able to talk to him last time? Let's talk to fucking Vic. This guy seemed pretty cantankerous, but maybe he's just bored and overworked. It might be nice for him to actually talk to someone. You slowly walked over to the counter and stood in front of him, the sudden shadow obscuring his reading material, prompting him to actually look at you. The guy just can't read a hustler in peace, can he? Not at fucking work, you nasty ass. Well, what do you want that's so damn important? Um, for you to do your fucking job. God damn this guy. <laughs> You're starting to think that you misjudged his character and that maybe this guy really was just an asshole. Uh. What's your deal, Vic? Why are you, why are you such an asshole? Why are you, are you an old man? Can I ask how old you are? I'm sorry if that's intrusive, but you can't be much older than me, right? Isn't it a little dangerous to work so late? Wow, look at the good Samaritan. You want points for being thoughtful or something? God, this guy is a dick. Don't worry, I can take care of myself. I'm sure you can, Vic. I'm sure you can. <laughs> and for the record, I'm a lot older than you. I'm a lot older than the guy in the back, too. How old's the guy in the back? 35. That didn't seem right. The guy in front of you looked barely 25. How could he be almost or above 40? From the looks of him, it didn't look like he was going to talk about this topic anymore. Maybe you can ask him something else. Or maybe you should leave him alone. My gut says to leave him alone. But I'm going to keep bothering him. Because he does not want to talk to me. And fuck this guy. <laughs> well, this would be a stupid question because he already talked about the guy in the back. Right? So I guess, where's the meat department? You figured you might as well ask him where the meat is. It's better than wandering around aimlessly and you'd be able to leave faster if you knew where everything is. Can you drag me to the meat department then? I'll be out of your hair sooner if I knew where it was. Well, I can direct you to my meat department. It's right downstairs. Be still my beating heart. You were taken aback by the sudden crude joke that you weren't quite sure what to say. At least this was the first time you saw this guy crack a smile, even if it was a little nasty smirk. Even if it- no. I would rather not see him smile at all, honestly. <laughs> His smile faded as quickly as it had appeared, and he was already back to frowning dejectedly. What do you think it is? It's in the back like most meat departments and most grocery stores. You've been inside a grocery store before, right? 
If not, I can explain what they are. Thank you, Vic. You see, there are these horrible little prisons that they trap hapless morons like myself in for all eternity so I can deal with idiots like you who don't know where the meat department is. Thank you, Vic. What a wonderful existence, right? Can't you see how happy I am? I can barely contain myself. Thank you, Vic. You were starting to regret talking to him. It would probably be best to leave him alone and finish your shopping. Yeah, bye. Have fun getting chopped into tiny pieces and stuffed in a freezer later. You decide it's probably time to leave the poor guy alone. He's clearly got some problems you don't have the time to deal with. Well, thanks for your time, Vic. Sorry to have disturbed you. Thanks. For, like, talking to me or whatever. It was a very, very unpleasant experience. I will not do it again. <laughs> You were shocked for a moment at a sudden change of demeanor. He actually didn't look as gruff like this, and you realized maybe he wasn't so bad. Of course, man. I do hope you get a break soon. My name is Cece, by the way. Cool. And with that, he turned on his heel and returned right back to his stagnant spot at the counter, immediately thumbing through the well-worn porno mag. Again, not a pleasant man. <laughs> you cracked a slight smile at him before heading down the aisles. You quickly make your way through the labyrinth of aisles. The store is quaint and mostly has off-brand products that you've never heard of before. You grab a stray hand basket that's been left on the floor and start mindlessly tossing things inside. You don't know if you're going to be snowed in, or if you are, how long you'll be, but it's better safe than sorry. Finally making your way to the end of the aisle, you can see the red glow of fresh meats under a display freezer light. You catch a few glimpses of someone moving back and forth and wonder if that's the butcher. As you approach the butcher counter, you notice the butcher is missing now. You could have sworn you saw someone shifting around back here. You ring the little bell on the countertop. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Nothing. Oh well, it's not like you needed anything cut for you anyways. There's a huge selection of cuts right in front of you. You bend over and study the meats through their cellophane packaging. You've never seen meat this fresh before. The marbling is unique too, and the bright cherry red color feels as if it's drawing you in. There's so much too. The open freezer is almost spilling over with packages of all different cuts, the names of which have been handwritten on each in sloppy script. You can't imagine that such a small town has this much demand for meat. Like what you see, honey? He's gotten beefier. He's gotten even beefier. <laughs> you jump at the sudden vocalization and take a step back as you take in the visage of the man before you. He's big. Real big. You feel intimidated immediately but can feel your cheeks heat up as your eyes drift down to his big, muscular arms. He definitely works out. You also notice all the scars riddling his thick, strong arms. You can't help but wonder where they came from, but you know it would be rude to just ask. Yeah, it was so rude to ask how he got those, and it's probably none of our business either, and probably nothing that we're ever going to have to deal with. So, as if reading your mind, the man chimes up. Taking in the goods, sweetheart. Don't be nervous. I know I look big and scary, but I promise you I'm as gentle as a lamb. I work outdoors a lot, you see. Get scratched up mighty fierce out there. You could tell from the tone of his voice and smoothness of his words that he was the type to call anyone sweetheart or honey, regardless of gender or presentation. The man flexes his biceps to insinuate what he's saying eliciting you to glance away embarrassed for a moment. You can tell from the glint in his violet eyes that he knew he was flustering you, and he was loving it. Might as well jump straight to the formalities. I'm Tate. Tate Frost. You ain't from around here, are you? I think I'd remember a cute little morsel like you. Well, I'm so glad this dialogue didn't change. <laughs> um, alright, so I guess we'll go through it telling the truth and then go back through and do a lie. Just like last time, and see what changes were made in between the two demos. You don't really have a reason to lie. He seems nice and he's just trying to make conversation. Quite a stark contrast to Vic up front. 
I actually just moved here. It's quite a change for me. I haven't really gotten used to the uh, quaintness of all this. I'm Cece, by the way. It's nice to meet you. Yeah. If you want, I could help you get used to the quaintness around here. I know it can be awfully lonely in these woods. Ain't much for miles and all. I could definitely help keep you warm at night if you wanted, Shaw. Yeah, but you won't, though. But you won't, though, because you kidnap us and then end, us, end up putting us in a freezer. That's the opposite of keeping us warm. You could feel the blush on your cheeks intensify at his forwardness. Part of you wanted to take him up on his offer, and the rational part of you kept you grounded in the fact that this was still a stranger. The least he could do was buy you dinner first. Or make you dinner first. In, make, in, make you in, into a dinner first. So what's a cute thing like you doing out here so late anyway? You glance behind you toward the front doors of the store, remembering how bad the snow was getting. Oh, I'm just stocking up before the snowstorm. Aren't you worried you'll get snowed in here or anything? It's coming down pretty hard and the roads won't be safe for long. Nah, I ain't worried. I was planning on sleeping here anyways. Got a lot of work around the store I gotta do. These pigs won't butcher themselves. No, they will not. They will just stand at the front counter and, and flip through porn magazines. Tate chuckled to himself as if that had been a joke. I wondered for a moment if he meant live or dead pigs were back there. He felt a little silly thinking a grocery store butcher had livestock in the back. That's so silly, dude. Of course he doesn't have livestock in the back. He's talking about people. Human people. Then you realize the other thing he had said. Wait, you're really planning on staying here for the night? What if you get snowed in for longer than just a night? Is that really safe? You're cute, how am I ever gonna let you? You won't, you won't let me get away. We already know this, we know this and it's fine. We, we've accepted this, this is the fate I am ex accepting. <laughs> Just don't play with me, man. <laughs> Awful sweet of you to care, honey, but I'm a big, strong guy. Ain't no one mess with me that left totally intact. Macho. Ain't nothing to concern yourself over, sweetheart. You best be looking after yourself instead. Yeah, yeah, anybody can get muscular and beat other people up. When's the last time you were vulnerable with somebody? That's real strength. I sure wouldn't want nothing unsightly to befall ya. It'd be a damn right shame messing up that pretty face. Okay, well, don't hit me in the face with a pipe later. That'd be great. Tate's voice dripped with a cold yet confident malice that felt as if it was drawing you in, making you more and more curious of just what this man was capable of. You weren't totally sure you wanted to find out, but you couldn't deny he was certainly interesting. In your gut, you can sense something off, something dangerous, but his confidence and warm voice drew you in. You considered giving him your phone number. That would probably be a mistake. You'd always been a bit cautious, and you're pretty sure this grocery store is the closest one to your new home. It'd be best to get to know him a little better. Maybe chat with him whenever you bought groceries. You thinking about something, my Sha? You're looking awfully deep in thought. Thinking about how I'm gonna go home now. JK, I know that's not happening. Tate's husky voice snapped you back to reality, and you gathered your thoughts along with your basket of groceries. It was getting late, and you still had a 20-minute drive home. Or with the ice, it'll probably take 40. Oh, right, sorry. I'd better get moving. I totally forgot about the snowstorm and everything, but, uh, I'll be back. I don't live far from here, and I'd love to maybe get to know you better. What was that thing you said? Shaw? I'm guessing that's like some kind of slang for friend, right? You're adorable, you know that? I really could just eat you. Up. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm too delectable over here. A treat, really. Shaw is essentially Cajun for sweetheart, or for me. Something I could just sink my teeth into. It may have been freezing in this grocery store, but you can no longer tell with how hot your body felt. A wave of embarrassment mixed with levicious shyness surging through your body. This guy was coming on strong, but part of you kind of liked it. You're Cajun? 
I guess that explains your accent. How long have you been here? You don't seem like the type to move up to New England. It's pretty cold compared to down south and all. Weren't you supposed to be leaving? Can't get enough of me, huh? I ain't complaining. It's a nice breath of fresh air compared to the upper class rich folk coming in here, trying to get away from it all. But I can't handle nothing less than a fancy ass timeshare. I guess I got Vic, but I'm sure you saw how much of a barrel of laughs that guy is. Oh, yeah. It's a, had a laugh and a half, that guy. It's a great guy. He ain't from around here neither, but he don't like to divulge too much info about himself, it seems. You chuckled gently under your breath as you listened to Tate banter on. You did need to be leaving, but what's a few more minutes? What's a few more minutes, really? You guess right, though, little rabbit. I come all the way from down south in the old boot state. A real small town in bumfuck nowhere, Louisiana. I lived with my mama until I was 18. Got with my high school sweetheart. And then you ate her, I'm assuming? Tate's expression and his whole demeanor suddenly shifted as the sentence drifted off. You wondered if he brought up a sore subject before he continued as if nothing had happened. Well, what's done is done. She's dead. Oh well. <laughs> to me, anyways. I'm sure to the rest of the world, too. I'm sure that that is a very technical term that you are using. I'm sure you are being quite literal. Besides, I've been having more fun just traveling the country. Ain't been back home in a long time. I never stay in a place for too long. Got a pretty nice deal on a trailer near here that don't ask questions. I've always had pretty good luck and all. I'm feeling pretty lucky tonight getting to meet ya and all. You smile up at him and shift your feet slightly. The more you talk with him, the more drawn in you feel. And you know if you don't stop now, you might just be spending the night here with him. Reaching toward the ample selection of meats, you toss in a few of the reddest cuts you see in your basket. You still can't believe how beautiful all these cuts are and you're excited to try them for dinner. You open your mouth to bid him farewell, but he cuts you off. Ah uh ah, -uh, you best be on a move now. I'll never let you go if you stay any longer. Standing up straight again, you make eye contact with the man you hope to get to call your friend. Friend. And lift your basket up for him to see in a gesture of farewell. You turn on your heel to head to checkout, unable to hide your smile as you leave. As you walk down the aisles grabbing random necessities, you can't help but think about Tate. He's so mysterious, yet charming, and well, you can't get his physique out of your mind either. You're really hoping something more will come of this. You aren't exactly looking for a relationship, but who knows where this could lead. Like, to the freezer. You're so preoccupied in your thoughts, you hardly notice your basket is now totally full, and the last item you grab clatters loudly onto the floor. You curse a little under your breath as you reach down to grab it, a bit embarrassed that you let your mind wander for so long on Tate. I guess that's your sign to leave, at least. You make your way up to the register and place your basket on the counter. You glance around the front of the store, but Fick doesn't seem to be anywhere around. Maybe he already took off. Were you really talking to Tate for that long? You walk over to his counter and look around. You notice the magazine he was reading is tossed haphazardly on the floor by a small black stool. Something about this doesn't feel right, and you try to peer towards the back of the store where you last saw Tate. It looks empty. Maybe he went back into the freezer? Guaranteed that's where he is. <laughs> Hello? Vic? Tate? I'm ready to check out. Nothing. Something didn't feel right. It felt as though you were being watched, but you know there's only two people in the store. That is, if Vic didn't up and leave. You can't shake this nervous feeling and just began bagging your items yourself. I'm, I'm gonna leave money on the counter, okay? And my phone number in case you need to contact me if it's not the right amount. You reach over the counter and rip off a little bit of receipt paper and grab a pen, quickly jotting down your info and tossing some money alongside it. You're pretty sure you added up all your groceries and left a little extra just in case. You toss the last of your items into a plastic bag and head to the exit as fast as you can. You're not sure why, but you feel like you need to get out of here. Now. You're not sure why you're so nervous, but something in the pit of your stomach is screaming to run. You wave your hand in front of the sensor to no avail. The door doesn't want to open. You remember it was pretty creaky when you came in. Maybe it's just stuck. 
Setting your bag down, you try to get a grip between the doors, pushing them in opposite directions as hard as you can, but the door doesn't budge. You realize it must be locked, but why would it be? You were just talking to Tate. They wouldn't have totally closed the store with you inside, right? You all right, Cece? You whirl around quickly, your eyes greeted with a similar sight as you try to slow your breathing. I think that's supposed to be familiar. You were panicking, but you weren't sure why. There was a thick feeling in the air. It almost felt like you were an animal being hunted. Hey, hey, now you're awfully jumpy. Did something happen? You let out a sigh as you slowly relaxed a little. You still couldn't shake this weird feeling, but at least Tate was here and his calm demeanor made you feel a little bit silly for freaking out. Ugh, you scared me a little. Oh, did I now? I feel a little ridiculous about it now. I couldn't find Vic and the door won't seem to open. I guess I just spooked myself. Without responding, Tate sauntered casually over to the automatic doors, looking them up and down before grabbing the center with both hands and tried to pry them apart. You couldn't tell how hard he was trying, but a guy as big as Tate should be able to tear those doors right off the hinges. He tried for a few more seconds before huffing and walking back over. Well, shit, honey, these bitches are really stuck, ain't they? Stuck, yes. Tate seemed genuine, but something about it was off, and he couldn't place it. Wasn't the blatant lying that seemed off from the genuineness? <laughs> Maybe he didn't want to break them? Guess old Vic got tired of waiting on my ass to clock out, so he took off early. Well, I got a few things that could help in the back. I'll be right back, honey. Before you can interject, Tate was already strolling back towards his section once again. You sighed and looked around the store. There were still a few things nagging at you about the situation. Did Vic really take off knowing you were still in the store? His register looked like it was still on, too, and you remembered his magazine thrown on the floor. As you sat and wondered, you noticed it was taking Tate an awfully long time to come back. Maybe you should go check on him. No thanks. <laughs> I'd rather put off the inevitable. You tried to calm your nerves. You really were on edge tonight. It probably hasn't even been ten minutes since he left. You let your eyes wander around the store, taking in small details that you hadn't taken the time to notice before. Like how the hum of the fluorescence was much louder than you realized, or how dirty the floor tile actually was. It looked like years worth of dust was just swept out of the way, building up against the walls and beneath the aisles. Tate still wasn't back. What was taking him so long? This was getting a little ridiculous. You turned around to look out the glass of the door. The snow was piling up more and more. If you didn't leave soon, you weren't going to be making it home. Pressing your face against the freezing cold window, you tried to peer outside and into the parking lot. You could barely see your car under the thick white blanket of snow that covered it. That was going to suck to clear off. Nearby you could see what you now assumed to be Tate's beat up blue pickup truck, also being engulfed by the unrelenting snowfall. You turned the other way and noticed just the slightest hint of green metal. Wait a minute. If the blue truck is Tate's, then that dirty green sedan must be Vic's. If his car is still here, then where? Well, hey there, Shaw. You have any luck with the door? Is he holding an axe? Named Lucy? Is that an axe? <laughs> yes, it is. Are you going to smash the doors? Seems like overkill, doesn't it? You were backing up from him without realizing it, until your back was pressed against the cold glass. Even though it was freezing in the store, you could feel a cold sweat begin to beat up under your clothes. Tate looked down at the axe in his hands, chuckling under his breath as he took a step towards you. Oh, now his apron's all dirty. Break the doors, though, Lucy? Nah, she's a sophisticated gal. I wouldn't think of doing something like that with her. He took another step towards you, and you tried in vain to shrink harder against the doors behind you. Your eyes darted to your left and right, weighing your options of where to run, but everywhere led to a dead end, and there's no way you can fight him hand to hand. Or rather, hand to axe. You know, it's a downright shame, Cece. I really thought you'd be a lot more fun than this. 
Really psyched myself up for a good time. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just such a disappointment. What are you talking about? You tried to force out a friendly laugh, but your voice was breaking from fear. You needed to defuse this or run. But there was nowhere to run. Tate had taken enough steps to ensure you couldn't run. Either way, he would be able to grab you. I know what you're thinking, scared little rabbit. You're thinking you can just run from me, ain't you? Wait till you distract me and flee to God knows where, huh? Hide under a desk, an aisle. I do love a good game of hide and seek. Well, go ahead then. Run. You don't have time to rationalize what's happening, but your body reacts on it as you push yourself off from the door. Tate doesn't try to grab you. Instead, just follows your movements with his eyes as you sprint to the aisles. Maybe you can lose him down one and figure out what to do. You slow down as you dart down one of the aisles. You can't hear him chasing you, so you move to tiptoe in hopes he can't figure out where you are. You peer through the shelves to see if he's nearby. Trying to calm your shaking breath, you try to think of your next move. There has to be somewhere to go. Maybe if you can sneak back to the front, you can break the window before he gets back to you. It would probably take him a minute to reach you, especially a man of his size. You're also pretty sure there's a phone at Fix Register. Uh-oh. <laughs> the next thing you know, there's an axe handle at your throat. You try to get a grip around the handle and push back as hard as you can, but the force of Tate's body weight pressed against it is no match. The pressure on your throat getting tighter, and you fear he plans on crushing your windpipe. Your vision slowly fades in and out as Tate refuses to let up. I thought you'd give me a better hunt than that. That was pathetic. Just a pretty face ain't enough if you ain't any fun, sweetheart. But that's alright, I can have my fun with you in so many other ways. God, let will see what a real will to live looks like. Yeah, I only had one of those fake will to live. I, mine was pathetic and scrawny. Off-brand will to live. You're all mine now. Don't disappoint me. Ah! He has shit on his back. What happened? My head is killing me. Your eyes slowly adjusted to the dark room surrounding you. Your head felt like it was spinning, and you struggled to recall where you were before this. Is that like a tattoo, or is that like ritual shit? You shivered as you looked at your surroundings. The air around you was freezing, and every breath produced little steam clouds. You attempted to lift your hand up to rub your sore eyes, only to be stuck in place. Looking down, your heart dropped the moment your eyes locked on the tight ropes binding your arms to the old wooden chair, as well as being stripped down to your underwear. Your breathing became erratic as you struggled against your bindings. It was no use. They were already cutting into your wrists from how tightly they were tied. Oh no, we, we found Vic. Oh, darn, look at, look at sad poor Vic. I think he's dead. Dang it. Taking in a deep breath, you attempted to calm yourself. Panicking won't get you out of this situation. You needed to stay rational. You were surrounded by what appeared to be beef carcasses strung around the room on dangerous looking meat hooks. Huh, they look awfully frostbitten. <laughs> they must have been hanging there for a long time. Then where did all that meat up front come from? A chill ran up your spine as your mind jumped to the worst explanations. You shook your head to clear your mind of those thoughts and continued to survey the room. There's a big metal door across the room and a chest freezer next to it. You figured the door was locked, but not that it would help right now. Then your eyes locked on something tucked under a line of beef carcasses that made your blood run cold. Oh my god! Vic! Vic's body laid bound nearby. You couldn't tell if he was breathing or not, but you could make out the deep red trail of blood that led from his head to the door. You pulled again at your bindings, no longer able to keep the panic down now that you were aware that you were sharing a room with a possible dead body. Suddenly, the sound of the door handle jiggling snapped you to attention, holding your breath as the door slowly creaked open. 
the sudden change of lighting burning your eyes as you readjusted. Hello, Tate. Well, well, well. Good morning, sleeping beauty. Get a good rest? I sure hope so. You're going to need it for what I have in store for you. Tate gestures to the playing cards in his hand as if to emphasize something, but you weren't sure what, before sauntering over to you, slamming the door behind him. Tate stopped just inches away from where you sat, his body looming over you menacingly. The fuck, bro? Why are you doing this, homie? I didn't do anything to you, except be nice and engage you in conversation. That never gets old. You know how many times I've been asked that? This ain't no movie, Shah. This here's real life. Ain't no secret motive or tragic past, honey. I just enjoy doing it, plain and simple. Tate leaned down close and placed his hands on both your thighs. You didn't want him to touch you, but you were freezing, and his warm hands slowly made the numbness go away. You could feel his hot breath against your neck, and you can tell he was smelling your hair as his thick lips brushed against you. Don't touch me. But you want to know the biggest reason I do this? He was so close to you now. His body was practically on top of you as he whispered into your ear, nipping at the skin gently between pauses. You know, they've got a pill for that. <laughs> you don't need to go to nearly this extent to get the same result. He slowly pulled away from you, his body heat leaving you cold and longing for more as he stood to stare down at you. Tate walked over to where Vic laid cold on the floor. You didn't want to look, but you couldn't help yourself from staring. He noticed you watching and chuckled lightly, as if this was a normal situation. Aw, you worried about Vic, Cece? So worried, my BFF Vic. <laughs> Don't mind him, he ain't dead yet or nothing. See? You winced as Tate cruelly kicked the unconscious man in the side, a small groan squeaking out of Vic from the pain, but not enough to wake him up from his blunt trauma-induced sleep. Still kicking. I was starting to worry a little, though. I hit him harder than I planned on. Just the heat of the moment, I suppose. Vic's a tough one, though. Didn't expect his whole back to be tatted up when I stripped him. Mighty impressed. Oh, okay. It's just a tattoo. Not a ritual sacrifice. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> Here I was. I thought this was going to be entertaining. Tate. You're just a boring, run-of-the-mill serial killer. And don't fret or nothing. I ain't touched him or you while you were out. But you can't skin a pig in clothes. Tate was bending down to check Vic's breathing his sharp teeth visible through his smile. You wanted to hide, to scream, to run, anything, but you were trapped at this man's total mercy. You could only watch as he trailed his dirty fingertips along Vic's back, up to the gash on the back of his head, before he stood tall again to address you. I'd like to play with my food a bit, though, so I'll make sure the two of you get some fun together, if you make it that long. He walked back over to you and knelt down to your eye level. His right hand produced a deck of cards that he expertly shuffled. You were taken aback by how quick and nimble his fingers were for how thick and callous they looked. So, you gamble? No, I have horrible, horrible luck. <laughs> no. You shake your head no. You weren't going to play his twisted games. And you had no desire to gamble for your life. Well, that's too damn bad. You see, I'm not really giving you a choice here, Cece. So you can hate it all you want, but this ain't about what you want. So you're gonna play the goddamn game. <laughs> Shit, man. If you just asked. <laughs> you didn't have time to register exactly what he was getting at before he was holding up three evenly spaced cards in front of you. The rules are simple. Just pick my favorite card out of these three and you win. Simple as that. Wait, which one's your favorite card? You'll know if you pick it now, won't you? Is that the Joker? Oh, fuck me. <sighs> Yellow. The right card. Tate looked back and forth from the card to you, his eyes lighting up as he flipped the card around. Ace of spades? 
Diamonds? Duh. <laughs> the Ace of Diamonds, huh? Aw, oh, that's too bad, Shaw. That ain't my favorite card. I don't... I feel like none of them are. I don't think a single card you're holding is your favorite. Never been much of an Ace guy. Too predictable. Every wannabe card shark says the Aces are their card. Aw, hey. Hey, Sha, don't look so down and out. It's only the first round. I'll go nice and slow. Tate moved closer to you, his hands pressing firmly against your thighs for leverage, as he leaned down to hover over your hand. You snapped your eyes shut. You had no idea what he was going to do to you, but you didn't want to see it. You held your breath and waited for the inevitable pain that was surely to come. Instead of pain, you felt something soft and warm grazing your knuckles. Oh no, 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 God, no, no. Mm -mm. Nope. Ew, I, uh, 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 ew. <laughs> Gross. Oh my God, he's going to bite my finger off. He's going to bite my finger. <laughs> he's going to bite it off and he's going to eat it like a fish stick. He was slowly running his tongue along each of your fingers until he reached your pinky, taking extra care to lick each joint. The blush painting your face grew deeper as you felt where the man's hand was going. Yikes, yikes, no, no, no. You knew you shouldn't be enjoying this, but you couldn't help but feel the warmth building in your core as he took care in massaging your leg. No, he's gonna bite your finger off, dude. He's gonna bite it off. He's gonna bite your finger off. Ew. Uh-huh. No, no, he's, he's, he's just, he's just getting, he's just getting the flavoring off. He's gonna eat it. Don't, don't do all that. His mouth moved lower until almost your entire pinky was inside his mouth. Here it comes. You feel his teeth pushing down a little harder against the knuckle, but your mind was spinning way too fast to process the pressure that was slowly growing. Tate, that's a little hard. The pleasure quickly shifted to pain and panic as he bit down harder, his teeth grinding against your bone. You screamed and tried to yank your hand out of his mouth, only for his teeth to latch on harder until... What's going to happen it doesn't negate this. <laughs> Your screams echoed off the cold steel walls surrounding you. Your ears were ringing from the pain and bile was rising in your throat. You wanted to pass out to escape the pain, but your body wouldn't let you as you felt your flesh and bones tearing from your hand. You heard your severed finger hit the ground with a bloody splat as Tate spat it out. You didn't want to look at him. Your vision was blurring from the pain and you couldn't regulate your breathing. Aw, oh, come on now. Stop your crying, Cece. We ain't even started yet. You're not even going to eat it? You're just going to waste it? You're just going to spit my pinky finger out onto the floor and leave it there? That's so wasteful. You could barely register what Tate was saying over the throbbing sound of your own heartbeat in your ears. Every beat sent a shockwave of pain into your missing digit. Time for round two. I am still recovering from round one. <laughs> Ugh. This one E is different from all the other E's and it's freaking me out. <laughs> I get it. I understand why it's different, but it's still different. <laughs> okay, well, we're definitely going to choose the correct card next time. So I'm just going to start trying different combinations of choices. Um and seeing what else is new between this version of the demo and the last version of the demo. Biting a pinky off. Definitely new. <laughs> I asked Vic if he was here by himself and he said, <laughs> no, I'm here with this stupid hot butcher in the back. That guy drives me up the wall with his stupid bulging muscles and his dumbass pretty hair. <laughs> My friend is in his feelings. <laughs> He's not even from around here either. He's some moronic redneck who just waltzed right in and was handed a job for being attractive. So it's still the same thing as before. We didn't lie to him. We told him we were new. Flirty, flirty. And then, let's go see where he went. I'm so curious. He was taking way too long and you were starting to worry. 
You glanced around the area one more time before heading toward the aisles to the freezers. Still no sign of Tate. You hope nothing bad happened to him, but there was still an eerie feeling you couldn't quite shake. Tate? Where are you? You called out and waited. No response. You were really starting to worry now. You didn't even notice the heavy footsteps behind you over the sound of your own heartbeats. Aw, poor little rabbit. Did you miss me that much? You whipped around to see Tate standing right behind you, his chest almost touching you as he loomed down over you. Oh my god. I thought something bad happened to you. You have to stop sneaking up on me like this. Aw, Sha, you were worried about little old me? How sweet. You ain't gotta worry about nothing. Big Daddy Wolf can protect himself, honey. Ugh. Tate had moved slightly closer to you, boxing you in against the aisle. He was so close you could smell him. The scent of tobacco smoke and cheap whiskey so strong it makes your nose crinkle. There was something else about his smell you couldn't quite place. Something almost... metallic? Aw, Cece, you seem mighty on edge. I get it. Stores can be quite spooky after hours, huh? He moved his hands to your sides, resting them on either side of you against the table. Your fight-or-flight reflex is screaming in your head as the huge man trapped you like an animal. You weren't sure if you should stop him or not. His strong, musky smell combined with your fear was making you lightheaded as you stared into his eyes. Hey, now, it's alright. Just relax. You want me to stop, or...? Tate suddenly grabbed you under- Oh, he picks you up. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. His body pressed against you instantly warmed you up as you let him pin you against the shelves. Your head was swimming in panic, but your body was giving in to him as you breathed him in. Make, have a little fun with me, I can make it worth your while. I very much doubt that you would. Is making it worth my while not immediately biting off one of my fingers? Because I feel like that's what you think, that that's your, that's your thought process. That's your reward system. <laughs> you let your worries melt away as you let the man who might as well have still been a stranger to you fill you up. Tate was certainly persuasive, you had to admit, as you moved your hands against his soft but firm chest, pressing and kneading his ample pecs. Like a cat. Like a cat making biscuits. <laughs> you know, I usually like to take things a bit slower than this, but you're just making it too hard. Okay. I got half a mind to tear into you, right? Please don't. Please do not do that. I like my fingers where they are, attached to me. <laughs> His voice was so rough in your ears it made you shiver as he nipped at your throat. Yikes. Ooh, got his hand in your shirt. You ran your hands along his thick, muscular arms, your fingers brushing against his deep scars. You can hear his breathing getting rougher as you made your way to his side, squeezing his fat gently. <laughs> Don't do that to me. <laughs> Do not squeeze my fat, gently or not. <laughs> he was certainly built, but you could feel a soft layer of fat that made him pleasantly squishy to squeeze against. Okay. Ooh! Ooh! Okay. Stop, stop trying to eat my hands. Hands are not for eating, Carl. That kills people. That's not the color you want to see when engaging in sexual activities with somebody else. <laughs> Tate stopped moving, and you finally placed where that metallic smell was coming from. Well, ain't that a goddamn mood killer, huh? Leave it to Vic to be a cock block, even now. You started to push against him to shove him away from you. But he was solid like a wall. Get off of me. As you wish, sweetheart. Tate spat the pet name as he said it. Something that felt so sweet feeling rotten and vile to you now as he lifted you up off the aisle before turning around, your limbs flailing in an attempt to get away from him. He kept a firm grip on your thighs as he held you in the aisle, 
yanking you closer to him and pressing a rough kiss against the side of your face before throwing you hard onto the tile floor. Well, you weren't supposed to start getting scared until later, but I guess you best start getting scared immediately. Your mind was reeling in confusion as you stared up at him like a frightened deer, Tate hungrily watching you try to catch your bearings, the realization flooding into you. You better start running, rabbit. Tate takes a step towards you and your body floods with adrenaline, quickly lifting yourself off the cold floor and turning on your heel to dash towards the exit. Run, rabbit, run! <laughs> I'm sure that's how he laughs. That's how he laughs in my head. <laughs> You can hear Tate laughing maniacally behind you as you search for any means of getting out or even protecting yourself. Suddenly, you remember Vic's stool, and you race over to grab it before turning to the door. You swing the stool at the glass door as hard as you can. You raise the stool to swing again, but you feel it get pulled roughly out of your hands from behind you. You ain't gonna get anywhere swinging like that, little bunny. I mean... I'd say I made a pretty considerable dent, considering I swung it one time. Tate, don't gaslight me. <laughs> this man needs to calm down. <laughs> Before you can react, you are whirled around and being lifted by the throat by one very strong hand. You try to dig your nails into his skin, but your blood-soaked gloves impede any damage you might have done. It ain't nice to tease a dog with a piece of meat. Guess I'll just have to have my fun with you some way else. Ain't that right, you little cock tease? Listen here, you little shit. Fuck you, man! It's your fault that you're dirty and disgusting, and that's why everything stopped, because you were literally nasty. Of the two of us, which one's covered in blood? The hand on your throat continues to tighten as your legs swing helpless below you. I'm gonna really savor our time together, sweetheart. Go real slow with you. Thanks. I'm gonna take you apart. Peace. Bye. Peace. And finally, everything went black. Oh my god, we're in the freezer. What? Somebody get me the fuck out of here. Hello. Oh my god, it's Vic. He looks like he's dead. Oh, no. Hello, Tatathan. Shut up. I don't want to talk to you. You weren't about to talk to this psycho. That's probably what he wanted, and you weren't going to give in. Turning your head, you broke eye contact, trying your hardest to strengthen your resolve. Oh, you ain't going to talk to me, huh? Showing the big bad wolf how tough you are? Tougher than the guy who calls himself the Big Bad Wolf. Your body was shaking, both out of fear and from the cold. He just hoped he'd get bored with you and let you go. That's all right, Shaw. I know ways to make you talk. Uh, sure, I gamble now. Yeah, I, I gamble. Sure. He laughed and clapped his hand against your thigh hard. He seemed rather pleased with your answer as he shuffled through his cards again. Well, hell yeah. Then you're going to have a blast with this, sweetheart. I'm sure you're used to gambling for what? Money? Trinkets? Well, this is much more fun. You see, I ain't got too much use for money. I got a job for that. I want something else. I want to take something more personal from you. Something we'll remember each other by. Now, don't that sound sweet? You didn't have time to register exactly what he was getting at before he was holding up three evenly spaced cards in front of you. Okay. We're gonna go for the middle card this time. It's definitely this one. Yep. King of Hearts. King of Hearts. Is that your favorite? You look angry. Ain't you lucky. Oh, <gasps> that was the right one. <laughs> you can't eat my finger. But luck only gets you so far, sweetheart, and I don't take kindly to cheaters. I didn't cheat. How, do, how could I have cheat? How could I have cheated? He's just a sore loser. He's just bad at losing. It's not a good look. It's not a good look, Tate. Ain't no way you picked right the first try. I was even willing to give you a practice guess to play nice, but you just had to cheat, huh? How could I have possibly cheated? I picked it random. 
Uh-uh, I don't want to hear it. I know a cheater when I see one. Ain't no one guesses right on the first round. Ain't gonna be a first time. But I tell you what, Shaw, I'm a nice man. How's about I give you something first? No tricks, you can trust me. So, I so trust you right now, Tate. Tate moves closer to you, his hands pressing firmly against your thighs for leverage as he leaned down to hover over your hand. All right, he's still gonna bite my finger off and that's bullshit because I guessed correctly. Goddamn sore loser. Insufferable. Bites your finger off if you get it wrong. He bites your finger off if you get it right. I can't believe that the man who just kidnapped a complete stranger and put them in the freezer to torture and inevitably kill them and cut them up into pieces of meat doesn't have sound logic. Doesn't make any sense to me. All right, so now we're gonna lie to his bitch ass face. Fuck you, I'm not from around here. I don't know you. I've lived here my whole life, bitch. Just a bit down the way. Picking up groceries for my family, it's fine. I see how it is then. You're a pretty little liar, ain't ya? What do you mean by that? You fumble over your words awkwardly, shocked that he picked up on your lie almost instantly. Reaching down, you quickly avoid eye contact by pawing through the meat and tossing anything in your basket in a diversion to hopefully escape this conversation soon. Something about the grit in his voice was oozing danger, and you had a feeling you needed to leave as soon as possible. Ha 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 ha! Tate's booming laugh cut through the tension and made you jump. His demeanor shift was jarring, and you were struggling to read him. Aw oh, shit, I'm just messing with you. Don't get all spooked now, honey. Years of gambling's just made me a bit of a master at reading people. Besides, I've been living here long enough to have seen you by now. You were just being smart, weren't you? It'd be mighty stupid telling a big bad wolf where you live now, wouldn't it? So stupid. I can respect that, Shaw. How alpha of you. <gasps> There's blood on Mike's hard pornography. <laughs> How'd you not notice that before? Your heart drops and you can feel the hairs on your arms stand up. You can feel hungry eyes on you and you don't want to turn around. Hey there, little liar. You whirl around and come face to face with the blunt end of an axe handle. And then everything went black. So I guess with the lying one, you only get the one path. And it's to get hit in the face with an axe. <laughs> So the leftmost card is the Ace of Spades. Okay. Doesn't matter anyways. Well, that was Frostbite, the extended demo. I loved it. They really, from the initial demo that I played to this demo, they really changed his personality. Like, it feels like he's a lot more unstable and a lot more of a, like, the, like that alpha male personality, you know what I mean? Like, calling us a cock tease because we found blood on his apron and got a little bit like, what the fuck, dude? Like, or continuously calling himself Daddy Wolf or Big Bad Wolf and just, I feel like they made his persona personality a lot less sweet, which feels weird to say because it's not necessarily that he was sweet before, but they made him a lot less sweet in this version. And then of course, they both just look a little bit different. Like the art's really good still and I like the new character art of Tate. This one will be this one will be interesting. The first demo, I feel like your chances of getting out, like surviving, were pretty decent. You know, there's there's obviously going to be death endings, but you're gonna have a couple more live endings, you know what I mean? And I feel like this version of Tate really don't got a good chance of survival there. 
It's not looking good for us. <laughs> well, that was Frostbite Reloaded. If you have any game suggestions, let me know. If you're using a shared device, please make sure that you wipe your search history after searching for pictures of Tate's brand new boobies. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>